What's up, y'all? It's me, Taylor Rooks. I am out here in Brooklyn, New York for AT&T's Emerging Voices album release party for Corday's highly anticipated sophomore album from a bird's eye view. Okay, Corday, amazing show. Thank here you. Here with AT&T. One thing I've been saying to everybody is you just do a really good job mm. connecting with your audience. Thank you so much. At what point in the show do you know you're in the groove? Hmm. Probably after like the first three songs. Well, now I'm like three to five songs. I'm like, and I feel like really good to where I'm just free flowing, you know? Yeah. So yeah. before I got here, you know, I was looking at Twitter, seeing what everyone is talking about. Everybody already has their favorite track, mm -hmm. their favorite lyric from, from a bird's eye view. Mm -hmm. How overwhelming has that response been for you? Hmm. It's been dope, honestly, man. It's, it's just infinite gratitude. It's something like, I can never get you, not even never get used to, but it's something that like I always appreciate because the fact that people even take time out of the day to even listen to the music, you know, and the fact that they rocking with it just means even more. Yeah, and they have such a connection to it. Absolutely. Okay, so then for you, I know I'm putting you on the spot, uh -huh. but what's your favorite song, your favorite lyric? Probably Westlake High. And um, I know it was Martin Luther King Day yesterday, and not to be like super, you know, but it's just the truth, like, um, I didn't even realize it. And when I put two and two together, like, if only Father Time had the patience of Mother Nature, if only I was wiser when I first discovered paper, if only Martin Luther never stayed at the Lorraine Hotel, like, just speaking on, because it starts off, like, what if, the big what ifs, like, if only I had, like, more knowledge when I first got money, or if only Father Time had more patience, and then it's like, well, if, going back to a history thing, if only Martin Luther never stayed at the Lorraine Hotel, so... That's, that's probably my favorite couple lines. Yeah, no, I love that. And you've said, just kind of going off that, you've said that seeing things from a bird's eye view means seeing it from like a different perspective. For sure. How did you gain that presence of mind in mm. life to be able to see things from outside of yourself? Because that's difficult. For sure. I don't know, it, it, it's kind of hard. I, I still can't say I've quite mastered it yet because like, you need to be like the most balanced, perfect being to always see things from a perfect from a bird's eye view and I'm not that, you know? I ain't gonna pretend to be. But um, but just always trying to look at things from other people's shoes, from somebody else's perspective, and just a, a more open-ended perspective is, is how I kind of see things from that view. And all the songs are based off some sort of real life event. Yeah. How did that personal connection to the songwriting affect yeah. the songwriting? Oh man, it was everything, honestly, because I think that all of my best songs come, come and derive from like real life emotions, experiences, and I'm just able to transmute it through song form in a real way. And I think that's what connects the most, you know? Yeah. And, um, and it's also the most fun to perform. What part of that makes it harder to write a song and what part makes it easier to write a song? Mm, well, you gotta kinda leave some stuff out. You kinda gotta leave too much, you know, can't give them too much, so it's a balance. Now, you tweeted that you want fans to listen to this song top to bottom, no skips, all the way through. Yeah. Why is it important to digest these things like, as a full body of work? For sure, especially for the first listen, because that's, that's the way um, I created the body of work, for it to be listened to, you know? And, and um, as an artist, I feel like when you're looking at a, a Basquiat or a Van Gogh, you must view it in the way the artist intended it to. And I, I, I literally created the album for it to be listened to it's at least for the first time from, from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Now, you hear artists talk a lot about things like a sophomore slump. You mm -hmm. were able to successfully avoid that with this album coming even stronger. But what pressure, you know, came with this release? Like, you know, I gotta live up, for sure. you know, to what I put out already. Honestly, man, I felt no pressure. After I made like the first four songs, I was like, oh, this is nothing. Like, this is easy. Like, so um, I think the song that really sparked that was Mama's Hood. When I made Mama's Hood, I, I found a good group. I made like Mama's Hood and Coach Carter. I was like, oh yeah, we're, these alone were That's good money. Favorite. We're yeah. good money. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> of course. And I know, you know, making that cohesive body of work was mm -hmm. a major one of your focuses. Absolutely. When do you know you accomplished that as an artist? When I got the outro good. When the outro is mm. good, that's when I'm like, okay. Oosah. We yeah. can start to just fill in the blanks, put all the rest of the pieces to the puzzles together. But the intro and outro is usually how I start an album. Bunch of amazing features on Thank this you. album. My favorites are Lil Wayne and Stevie Wonder. Dope. I want to start with Lil Wayne. Uh -huh. I've heard you talk about the longevity that Wayne has you For know, sure. in this game. What did you take from him in that creative process? Man, his work ethic is just incredible. It's like, I, like, I can't even fathom being 25 years 
and like a continuous growth. Like we were just talking about that in here. Like Wayne has been like super lit since he was 13 years old and he's only gotten bigger. And um, to still have that work ethic after having so much success and so many accolades and done so many things and already cemented, legacy already cemented, already Hall of Fame. And to still, um, you know, uh, have that, that that work ethic and just that killer mindset is truly inspiring for sure. Absolutely. And Stevie Wonder, I mean, I'm sure you grew up sure. just listening to Stevie Wonder. You know what? Not really. Like, wow. it was just like soundtrack to my life. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it was being played in the house. It was always on movies. But mm -hmm. I didn't recognize, like, the significance of it. You know, you're just a kid. Mm -hmm. But as I grew older, especially, like, the last couple years, I'm like, wow, Village Ghetto Land. So, you know, like, so many beautiful songs, Stevie songs. Like, he's really, like, one of the best musicians of all time. Yeah. So it's definitely, like, to say it's, like, a bucket list or even to call him, like, an icon or a legend is, like, not even, like, calculable. Doesn't he's, even he's get He's an it, icon's yeah. icon, you know? Absolutely. And he's on your album. I mean, has that really soaked in? I do when I look at that track list. <laughs> and, I, and when I see his name. Okay, a uh, couple more for you. What does this album represent for you in your career? Just a moment in time of where I'm at in my life right now. Every album represents that. Like, I can tell you what I was thinking, and where I was going on, and where I, my head was mentally when The Lost Boy came out, and then looking back at this one, I'm be like, okay, this is where I was in my life and my career, and all of these things were going on. So it kind of, it's just a time stamp. Yeah, and it's certainly been a really beautiful journey. I mean, Thank when you. did you know that you wanted music to be you know, your career, your passion? When I was 10, I knew it when I was, since I was little. Mm -hmm. I always knew it. Yeah. How does technology and connectivity play a role in your music, your creative process, your day to day, your mm -hmm. fans? As far as like, you know, interaction with fans and uh, music supporters and things of that nature, it's everything. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for technology and social media. I mean, I would have found a way to still do it, but it would have took a lot longer, yeah. you know? <laughs> and um, it's a dope thing to really like just versus being sort of like a hedgehog or an old man turtle like oh i can't stand that you know which is how i used to be i kind of just embraced it and because it's such a lucrative tool for just getting your music and your thoughts out there yeah because i mean if you had to go a day with no wi-fi internet wireless device like what would that day look i'm like? actually planning to do that Really? like after i'm done with this tour i'm gonna do uh another couple of tours i'm gonna go to like a monk camp like I plan to do that for real. Like just a nice cleanse, come back to your peace and yourself. Absolutely, I'm, I'm going on a vow of silence. I always, I said when I'm done with this album and I'm finished touring and stuff, I'm going on like a, a two week vow of silence. Wow. Yeah. And what made you want to do that? I wanted to do it before this album came out, but I wasn't, it was just impossible because I had so much stuff I had to do, so many commitments. But yeah. I don't know, I just looked it up one day and I was like, that looked like some cool stuff to try. Yeah, I know someone that did that actually and they said after it, you just have such clarity. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, so I hope I hope that you get that. Thank right. you. Last one for you. Finish this sentence. Okay. Music has the power to affect emotion. Music can immediately alternate your emotion, like or affect your emotion. Like if you're in a sad mood, you can listen to some music to get you better, even more sad. Um, music can make you think about something. Music can it can do so many it can inspire you it can do so many things for you like what's the world without music it's just a rock you know absolutely i love that well i'm so happy i, I got to by watch the way this. i didn't say that i think yeah. that was on like this um i forgot it was like this leak kendrick song he was like the world without art is just a rock so i just didn't i ain't you he was like i love that credit. i <laughs> want to take credit for that like because it's super player, but I don't want to take credit Yeah, well, I'll say it again, like, next week, and I'll give you credit. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is beautiful. I'm so happy I got to watch this show with AT&T. You killed it. Thank you. And I'm so excited to just keep watching your career as it continues to grow. Thank you. Know? you. I can't wait. Yeah. We got to do this again, like, every, like, couple years. I'm with and it. And just, like... Okay, this is where we at now. Yeah, this is where we at. You so gotta check the progression of absolutely. everything. No, Come on, absolutely. Come on, looking forward to it. Yes, beautiful to meet you. All right, pleasure, <laughs> same, all mine.